Hello, and welcome to the Experience More Tour Table Talk series. We are here today with Brooks to talk about two new shoes hitting the market this spring. So to do that, we have Tatiana calling in from Seattle, and she's going to be giving us some insight into these products. After she's done, I'll be back to talk about some of the Gore-Tex technology. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Tatiana. Tatiana, welcome. Hi, Marshall. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and thank you everyone for coming on and watching this video today. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I am, of course, my name is Tatiana. I am the Northwest Guru for Brooks, which means I cover the great states of Washington, Northern Idaho, Montana, and Alaska. Um, obviously, uh, a really sort of like wild west mountainous area. I am really stoked to be here. Um, I really do have like sort of a loving relationship with running. I one day just kind of got bitten by the bugs. I'm really stoked to be able to work with a brand that not only like kind of appeals to me in terms of their motives for creating a shoe and that whole run happy spirit, but also like letting me travel and getting to talk about the things I love to do, um, which is why I'm here today. But first, want to talk a bit about why Brooks, you know, there's a lot of brands out there. When I first started running, I think it was pretty much just two major brands and a bunch of little ones. And now all of a sudden the competition on this field is incredible. So, you know, why this brand in particular, um, we really, I really like Brooks just because we are really inspired to help everyone run their path to a better self. And that really is their path. We really want to emphasize that not every runner is running for the same reason or even in the same place or in the same way. Uh, and so it's all about your own personal journey, whatever makes you happiest, because we really do believe that running is a limitless source of positive energy that can transform a day, a life, and even the world. Uh, and especially after a couple of years online, I think everyone is really excited to get back out and run in whatever way that means to them. Um, we are, as I said, like a very runner facing runner minded company. Um, and that really does lead how we produce our product. So we are really led by runner insights, product insights. So we in the before times would have gone out into the field and spoken to runners directly to find out what motivates them, what excites them, what they're interested in and what they really, really want out of their gear. Because I mean, you can spend all your days in like a lab and produce the best shoe you've ever produced. But if the runner doesn't like it when they put it on their foot, you haven't really made a great shoe. So we really do want to kind of get to the core of it and really figure out what's driving people. This past year, uh, we actually were able to do this in a different format. Again, normally we would have gone to them directly, but this past year or past couple of years, we've had to get a bit creative with how we gather our insights with runners. So we've done a lot of virtual meetings. So meetings over Zoom, over video, like we're doing here. Um, and a lot of just digital surveys to figure out what's driving people, especially in this time where people are trying to get outside for more than just the reasons that they would have in the past times. Like people are trying to like take care of themselves mentally. They're trying to take care of themselves physically as well. Um, and so we've been able to do a ton of surveys. We've surveyed over 19,000 runners in 2020 over for over 13 different projects at Brooks. Um, and these really are what are guiding our insights to what we're creating. So every bit of data that we've collected from this will show up in the shoes that we produce over the next few years. So we're really, really excited about this because it literally is people who helped create these shoes, not just a brand. We are very passionate about the people who wear our shoes, but we're also passionate about the planet that we live on and the people on that planet. And so we have a lot of different leading commitments that we as a brand are really want to align ourselves with. We could talk about these all day um, and spend you know hours on each one, but the one that I will focus on for this presentation, since we are going to be talking about the ghost, which I, I will sort of preview is a carbon neutral shoe. I wanna talk a bit about our sustainability commitments. We have some very aggressive, <laughs> um, goals. Uh, the first one being that by 2023, so next year, we want to be using 100% recycled polyester in all of our textiles. So that is our apparel. Um, so tops, bottom, shorts, all that, um, as well as in the uppers for our shoes. So it's a really, really big commitment and we're actually getting pretty close to it. But yeah, just one of the many ways that we're trying to make an impact and do better not only by the runner, but by the environment that the runner lives in as well. So with that all being said, we're gonna to get to the meat and potatoes, the reason you all are here, which is the footwear. And we're gonna kick it off with one of my favorite shoes, the Cascadia 16 in Gore-Tex. This is, oh my God, what can we say about this shoe? This truly is the SUV for the trail. It's one of the like longest running 
uh, heritage like shoes in our brand. It really has been around for a long time, 16 years, in fact. Um, and it really did start as that sort of protective, I don't know what the trail is going to throw my way, but so long as I'm in my my SUV, my Cascadia, I am going to be able to handle anything. And even more so with this Gore-Tex, which Marshall will kind of talk you through a little bit in as we get further into the tech details. So I've mentioned the Gore-Tex upper. Um, the Cascadia, like all of our shoes, we are using increasingly more recycled content. So at a certain point, we will actually be able to assign a value to the Cascadia for you know how many, for example, how many recycled bottles worth of content is in the upper of the Cascadia. Um, I will also mention that we have completely redone the shoe from top to bottom. So not only does this have like a fresh new upper and a fresh new look, but it also has a fresh new fit as well. So the Gore-Tex Cascadia 16 does have a completely different last from the previous Cascadia. Um, and it will offer just a little bit more of a roomy fit in the toe box. Not so much that you're swimming in shoe, which like for the trail is, you know, too little shoe and too much shoe can both be problems, but just the perfect amount. And we're able to really adjust the shoe nicely with this new fit so that whether you do need something a little closer to foot or something with a little bit more room, you're able to get that out of this shoe. Onto another feature though of the Cascadia, that is the ballistic rock plate. You can see that kind of called out there on the bottom of the shoe. It's that sort of orangey color that kind of peeks through the tread. This is really what's gonna offer that next level of protection from roots, from ruts, anything un like uneven on the trail. It works as basically like a shield effectively to protect you from those things on the trail. Um, and in years past, uh, it was just a single piece, unbroken, just a solid piece of plate that we had in the bottom of the shoe. But you'll notice on here, it does say flexible protection. And that's because the new updated version of the Cascadia has sort of fingered grooves at the front of the shoe. Um, and you can see that kind of alluded to in the forefoot, the way it has the different separate pieces. The idea being that sort of like the suspension system in an SUV, if you do encounter, for example, a rock or a root, like on one side of the shoe, it doesn't lift the entire shoe up. Instead, it stabilizes only that one section lifts up and the rest of the shoe stays solid and stable. Really, really nice feature to have, especially if you're going somewhere really, really rocky. This version of the Cascadia also got a, a major update to the midsole material. So it Prior into, so the Cascadia 15 used BioMogo DNA. This new updated version of the Cascadia uses what's called DNA Loft V2. There is also a V1 and there's also a V3. We'll get into that at a later date. That's a lot of weeds to go through right now. But the V2 is sort of a lighter, softer version of what you would have previously experienced in the Cascadia. So especially for a hefty protective shoe like this, it's nice to be able to shape a little bit of weight without compromising on that softness. You'll also notice from this slide, we've pointed out those sort of like reddish grooves, especially in the back. You can also see them a little bit on the front and those work almost like an accordion. So as you're landing pretty hard, especially in that heel area, because the vast majority of runners are heel strikers, um, that works to sort of like release the pressure and the impact from that strike and just give you a smoother, softer cushioning feel as you go from heel to toe. Just again, a nice additional feature, especially if you're going over some really uneven terrain. So what's my experience in the Cascadia? As I've mentioned, I am the Northwest guru, which means my territory is just full of trails. The photo you see here is actually from a trail race I got to do out in Montana this past year. Um, and it really, like anytime I'm traveling to one of these spots, especially if I don't know it terribly well, or if I'm you know, on the recommendation from a local, I'm visiting a new trailhead, I'll usually pack a Cascadia just because if you don't know what the trail is going to throw at you, this shoe will take you through it, especially with the Gore-Tex version, whether it's dust or dirt or, you know, snow or rain, like this shoe will get you through it and do so with like confidence and comfort. It's not, there's a tendency I feel for like shoes like this to feel like almost um, anesthetic, like you almost can't feel the earth beneath you, but I still feel like I can get connected to the trail. I feel like I'm kind of out in nature while still feeling very much protected, very much safe, no matter what terrain I'm running in. So another reason why this is one of my favorite shoes. All right, next and last but not least, we do have the Ghost 14. For those of you who for some reason are not familiar with the Ghost 14, this is Brooks's bestseller. Um, the Gore-Tex version is a nice addition because if we're gonna make a road shoe in a waterproof version with Gore-Tex, it's gonna be our bestseller. We sell over 2 million <laughs> pairs of Ghost 14s a year. We're probably gonna crack even higher than that this year because this shoe is just so incredibly popular. 
Um, I'll move over to the first description, which is the upper. Obviously, we do have the Gore-Tex liner on here, so that will offer a little bit more protection. And Marshall, again, will dive further into the tech details there. Um, I do want to call out, though, that um, as I alluded to before, the Ghost is our first carbon neutral shoe. Um, we are like not only trying to be ethical in terms of how we're producing it, um, I kind of alluded to the recycled content. So the Ghost 14 now uses four bo water bottles worth of recycled plastic up by one and a half bottles from the Ghost 13. So that's a nice little update. The other thing I'll mention though, is we do have this gorgeous engineered mesh on the Ghost Gore-Tex and on the regular Ghost as well. Um, this engineered mesh is something that we've been using it for a few years now. It's really breathable, very lightweight. And because we have more controlled over the mesh and like how it's manufactured, which is where the engineering part comes into play, we're able to reduce the amount of like extra layers of like overlays and other things we put on top of it. So we're really able to cut down and give you like a wonderful, like as close to a single layer as possible, which paired up with Gore-Tex's material gives you an even better combination there. The next thing I'll talk about are the better improved transitions in the Ghost 14. So we did do a small update just on the tooling of the outsoles, that is to say in the pattern of the tread on the shoe. Um, you can see, if you look at the bottom of a Ghost, this is like classic cushioning road shoe. So very like the, the tread is very splayed out, you'll see like everything's like disconnected. There's all these separate pieces. Like this is really to optimize the like impact absorption of the sole. So as you land, it's not a single piece that's going to absorb the shock of the impact all at once because you're landing and like you have this segmented pad that like allows you to roll down little bit by little bit. You just disperse that impact over more of the shoe and get just a really soft cloud-like experience out of it. The other thing that we updated in the Ghost was the midsole material. So the, pri the previous Ghost, the Ghost 13, used a combination of Biomogo DNA, which was sort of our, our all-purpose um, foam material package, uh, as well as a combination of that and our DNA loft. This new update to the Ghost uses 100% DNA loft, um, and this is loft V1, not loft V2 like we had in the Cascadia. Um, still a really premium feel underfoot. The motivation to change this was more to give a better cushion experience. Um, we still really love Biomogo DNA. It's one of the like things that really set us apart when we first started taking off. Um, you can consider that as sort of like the all-purpose flower of our foam packages though, whereas the DNA loft is more of like you know, your bread flour, your cake flour, that thing that is just a little bit more tailored to the experience. So loft is really truly our cushion experience foam. So it'll just give you a little bit of extra softness underfoot without adding any extra weight. And so I'd, talk, I'd like to talk a little bit right now about my own experience. This is from a different race, not in Montana. This is in my home state of Washington here. Um, and this was actually part, I, this is me finishing a trail relay that I did with four other gals. Um, and believe it or not, even though it was a trail relay race, I actually wore a ghost to run it. Um, this was a really, really interesting decision because I, you know, I, I think at the time I didn't have a, a trail shoe to use. So I almost had no choice, but I mean, we actually were able to get second place in this race and it was, I didn't feel like I was held back at all by the shoe. It responded really, really well to the trail. I felt super like soft and cushioned the entire time and it was a race. So, and I typically don't try to run very fast. I'm very much that like, let's kick back and like run easy. But even here where I was really trying to push the pace and really pull ahead of the other women's team that we were competing against, I was able to get that out of the go. So it's it's able to do it a lot. It's a kind of a workhorse of a shoe. If you want to do like some nice, easy kickback sort of miles, it's there for you. But if you do want to kind of push the envelope, go a little bit further, this is a really great, great shoe for that as well. So here we are at the end of the presentation. And here's sort of an overview, literally, of the two shoes. Um, that we talked about today. So you see the Ghost Gore-Tex up top and you see the Cascadia Gore-Tex on the bottom. These are both such phenomenal shoes. There's a reason we chose these two to have Gore-Tex in them. The Ghost, I mean, again, is our bestseller. Uh, it's gonna fit the most feet. Uh, long ago, someone called this the Goldilocks shoe and I've never forgotten it because it truly is. It's not too heavy, not too light not too soft, not too firm. So this is a really great shoe for someone who just wants a nice all around shoe or frankly, just like a newcomer who doesn't really know exactly what they want yet. This is a really great intro shoe for them. Um, and then we also have the Cascadia, again, our longest running trail shoe. So just a nice standby 
one that, again, you would pull if you do want something really protective, really secure, and just will take you through anything on the trail. So of course, we're going to match that up with Cortex, like just add another layer of protection on what's already sort of like a workhorse shoe. Um, I do want to comment a bit about like the different fit profiles. Uh, obviously, the Ghost, as you can see, compared to the Cascade, it does have a slightly wider toe box to it. Um, that said, I mean, the Cascadia did have an like an adjusted last on this update. So you will get a little bit more roominess out of the toe box, not quite as much as the Ghost. The Ghost, it's been pretty consistent year after year. We don't like to change it a lot because people don't like us to change it a lot. Um, whereas the Cascadia, we're, because the trails are always changing, we're always trying to fine tune exactly how this will come out of it. So both of these are great pulls. Actually, I would say if you do have someone who's looking to transition from row to trail or vice versa, these are pretty analogous shoes. Like if you have someone who's been running in the ghost for a while, which a lot of people do, again, it's our bestseller. So a lot of people run in it um, and they're looking to try a trail shoe out, point them towards the Cascadia. That's usually what I do. And then if you do have someone who's been long, you know, Cascadia is their long standby and they're like, oh, but like, it's harder for me to get to the trail this, these days, or I've moved and I don't know the trails as well here. And I'd like to do more road running. The ghost is a really good pull for that reason as well. So you can't go wrong. Both of these shoes are phenomenal. And yeah, very, very, I'm always excited to talk about these shoes any day. <laughs> Tatiana, thanks for that insight into, into both of those shoes and just Brooks in general. It's really neat to hear your personal stories and also just give us that, 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 that personal insight so that we can feel confident selling these shoes. So thank you for that. And um, what I'm going to do now uh, is uh, just to talk a little bit about the Gore-Tex technology within these shoes. Why add Gore-Tex to the shoe? You know, customers may come up and they may ask, well, I just want to have the non-Gore version. Well, uh, I prefer to buy the Gore-Tex versions uh, because I don't know what the trails are going to dish out throughout the course of a season or even the course of one trail, right? So I live in the North Cascades of Washington State. Um, up where I am, we have a long shoulder season where it's, uh, you know, the slush and mud season. So here I am uh, out running in, in just the classic slushy conditions. And if I didn't have Gore-Tex in my shoes on this day, I would have had very cold toes, uh, probably blisters. I mean, this is just as wet as it can get um, from those trail conditions. But I was actually training to go down to go to the Grand Canyon and run the rim to rim trail. And so I wanted to do it in the same shoes. And here I am on the rim to rim, uh, wearing the exact same pair of the Cascadias on my feet. And you know, the, the, the cool thing here is that I could have the confidence to be able to run in both the slushy conditions and also in these dry desert conditions, knowing that the shoes were going to be breathable and optimized for that. Um, and so the Gore-Tex technology gave me that, that reassurance and that comfort. Incidentally, out in the, the desert, another kind of bonus is that, that dirt and the dust, um, the barrier does prevent that from getting into the shoes. And so you don't get that grit between your toes on those, those long runs like, like the Grand Canyon. So we put that barrier into the shoe to give you the comfort and the protection out on the runs, but we don't always have the same barrier in every single shoe. We're gonna be engineering different membranes and different uh, laminate construction packages depending on the end usage. So in a lot of like our hiking product um, or mountaineering product, we're gonna use booty construction because this is a, a tried and true and durable construction in, in those types of shoes. In the running world, um, we've uh, developed this other technology called Invisible Fit, which is designed to be uh, integrated perfectly into running shoes. So how does it work? Well, as Tatiana uh, talked about, you know, there's those engineered meshes on the upper and these shoes now, the way they're built is actually they're built all as one piece like this. And so we can actually now laminate and directly bond our technology onto the, the fabric before it's been turned into a shoe. And you can see this sort of our origami process as it goes into being created into a shoe. And then after that, um, we can then, or Brooks can drop a drop liner into that heel section and add a little additional custom padding to give it that perfect Brooks heel fit that we all, all expect. Now you can look at the, the profile on here, you know, you can squint all you want and you probably won't see that the Gore-Tex is even in there. It is, it's just that direct bond construction makes for a very uh, true fit in the front of the shoe. So when I say true fit, really, what am I referring to? It's that, it's that full toe box comfort. So we can get that full toe splay. We don't get the popping. We don't get the, the feel of the Gore-Tex in the front. Um, we get that customized drop heel liner and it is a lighter weight um, and slightly more breathable construction than some of our other construction techniques. 
So really nice to have that in there for those long runs or even just the short runs, really. In addition, they're fast drying as well, which is really important to runners. You want to have dry shoes in the morning when you when you start your run. And so we have tested these shoes to learn uh, about how fast they dry. And we learned that they have about 30% less, less water pickup and about 50% quicker drying time than our traditional construction. And in fact, they dry uh, only about an hour slower than a non-Gore shoe. So you get all the benefits of Gore-Tex, but you still have dry shoes in the morning when you've been out in that mud and those wet uh, ground conditions that you might experience. So with that, I wanna thank you for watching. I wanna thank Tatiana for being here with us today uh, and, and being part of the Experience More Tour. Um, and we will see you back out there. Uh, enjoy some of our other videos we have on experiencemoretour.com or please come and join us for one of the events during our event season. Thanks and have a great day.